WBCM Boston, yes, this is a big deal. I'm Bradley J, and I'd like to welcome all of you at home and all of you in our studio audience. This is one of the greatest moments in, in really the history of BCN. It's one of the highlights. What happened was David Bowie put out a new album. We love it. And we thought... We don't just want to play the record, we want to like get to know the guy who put the record together finally after all this time. So what we did was we said, hey, everybody, fax, email, write in your favorite questions, and we chose some questions, and you people in this studio are the cream of the Bowie fan crop. But, but, that is not to diminish all of you who are freaks at home as well. It was very difficult to choose the questions, so if your question did not get chosen, don't feel you are less of a person. We appreciate it. Let's have a round for all those people who could not make it. Okay. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> they didn't make it after all. Uh, not only do we get to talk to David, but we're gonna get a performance, as you can see. Are you all, anybody nervous at all? Yeah, no kidding. I've met him a bunch of times, and I still have the shakes. You think you'd get over it, but you don't. So let's bring him out here. Hi there, David. And here's Reeves. Let me just say a couple of things to David before he comes in. David, your generosity for coming out and doing this is not lost on us. We appreciate it. Now, thank you very much. That's, that's really lovely. One quick question. You look... There we go. David looks great. You look great, and you look really like you must be very pleased with this new album. Is there anything that you're particularly pleased with with, with Earthling? Uh, um, the fact that Reese and I are here, uh, this, is, uh, this place means a lot to us, this studio in particular. Uh, a lot of, uh, well, he's worked with most of them, but a lot of the favorite guys from the 80s uh, recorded here, and it's like a bit of a shrine, so this is really cool to be here. Now, it started... When it started out, you took Reeves on because he was a good guitar player. But as I understand it, he's become sort of a sex symbol, and his guitar playing has started to slide. And you, and you have to do overdubs in the studio. I do most of the guitar work now, yeah. It's, uh, it, it, you know, some guys have got it, Elvis had it, Jim Morrison and, uh, and Reeves, and it's... Uh... Now, one of our listeners who I will give credit to now, I have to find out their name, but the question is appropriate now. Reeves and you seem to get along pretty well. What is the wildest, sort of funniest uh, prank or joke that Reeves has played on you that you can think of? Not the ticker suit. It, it taught me, without telling me, um, deaf and dumb language for various uh, blasphemous <laughs> things and, uh, and it encouraged me to use them on people <laughs> that understood what they really meant. All right. We'll get to some questions later. While David and Reeves perform, I'm going to come down there and uh, we'll get some questions. But I'm going to get out of your way. Uh, what's that? You, are, you have like the, the, the uh, index finger and the little finger up. You know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me. I don't know if I want to know. This is the, the cleanest one of the lot. Isn't this cute? This means bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh oh. This is one that he learned from the mute lesbian channel. I kid you not. <laughs> in... Oh, goodness. It looks like you're taking a football handoff, but moving your fingers. All right, I'm going down there and uh, hook up with some of these people. I'm going to let you uh, Alan's perform. Alan's using it now, I think. That... <laughs> what are we going to hear first? Do we know? Alan. It's a topical joke. Oh, <laughs> but he does look good, doesn't he? <laughs> We, I, I'm fine, I'm fine. It's, uh, you can't be late for your gig tonight with Jeff and Jane Hudson. Oh, man, you better not show up. <laughs> Dude, I told the people, if you showed up at the gig, I would soil my Calvin Klein's, throw my guitar, and, run, and just run away. Especially if we back to the Sex Palace program. Who's been talking to you? <laughs> you guys. Are you going to perform first so I can get down there and uh, we'll take some questions? Yeah, yeah. What are we going to hear first from, from Earthling, I imagine? I have no idea. Oh, man. You guys can just do that? 
Yeah. You can just do that? <laughs> just call him up? All right, David Bowie on WBCS. <laughs> This is uh, a new very uh, interesting thing about taking some older songs and, pl and playing them acoustically is that if they're, if they're driven technically or whatever, um, uh, when you uh, take them down to their essentials, they really become something else. So this one, there's one music I promised vowed, in fact, that I'd never play, and that was country and western. So I now have a chance to go back on that, and here's a, here's a country and western favourite. Uh, She was tired of killing bees. When I looked in her eyes, they were blue, nobody home. She could have been a killer if she didn't walk the way she do. She opened strange doors that we'd never close again. She began to wail, jealous of scream, waiting on the lights, no one on me. Scary monsters, super creeps, keeps me running, running scared. Scary monsters, super creeps, keeps me running, running scared. me to stay in a store room. She asked for my love and I gave her a dangerous mind. Now she's stupid in the street and she can't socialize. Well, I love the little girl I love her till the day she dies. It was Jimmy's guitar sound, jealousy scream, waiting at the lights, know what I mean. Scary monsters, super creeps, keeps me running, running scared. Scary monsters, super creeps. Thank you. Are you guys freaking out or what? Jeez. What if we take a couple of questions from our audience? Sure, now? I'd oh. love to, yeah. All right. Let's have, oh, it's Elise from, where are you from, Elise? <laughs> from Winchester. What's your question, Elise? Beautiful cathedral you have there. I must say, first of all, that you look absolutely marvelous. <laughs> marvelous. Thank you very much. Um, you look pretty I... good yourself. Oh, thank you, David. Woo! <laughs> Pretty good um, line, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, I've heard that you um, enjoy reading, and I'd like to know what you're reading right now and who your favorite um, authors are. Okay. Uh, right now, two things. They're both arty things. One's uh, The Life of Picasso, the second part by John Richardson. Uh, second one is uh, the, a really excellent biography of Marcel Duchamp, which just came out uh, a few weeks ago. I think it's somebody Campbell. I can't remember. All right, really you did it. <laughs> there for Elise. <laughs> good job, Elise. And who do we have here, sir? Gil Irizarry. Say it slower, please. Gil Irizarry. Gil, what's your question for Dave? Still sounds bad. Dave. <laughs> Dave. I mean, you've been here what? <laughs> Five minutes, and now you're Dave. Dave Gill, Gill Dave. <laughs> uh, 
how long did I take? don't break for the word, David. <laughs> how long did it take for your eyebrows to grow back after Ziggy Stardust? Well, <laughs> who said they grew back? Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, how I did it. I, uh, Ziggy came over here with eyebrows and I, I think it was down in Florida we did a gig and I got roaringly drunk the night before and apparently I cut one of the eyebrows off <laughs> and I woke up the next morning and, and realised the folly of my ways <laughs> and I had to kind of equal the situation so I had to take the other one but it, was, I, it wasn't an intended thing it, uh, that's just this is a, a short footnote to that whole thing <laughs> Speaking of Iggy, did you ever give any thought to perhaps doing a play based on the Iggy thing, a musical? Based on an uh, eyebrow kind of thing, right? You mean? Um, yeah, it's uh, I couldn't, it could be Kafka-esque, wouldn't? Couldn't it be? Could it be? <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not a rock musical, though, Bradley. All right, uh, we could do another song, or I can There's ask you another question. There's a guy Vince Taylor, uh, actually, uh, that the that part of the Ziggy persona. Do you know about Vince Taylor? No. He was an American who had ambitions to be a kind of a Presley-esque character in the late 50s. And he never, he couldn't make it here, kind of like PJ Proby, who's another one of those kind of Elvis look-alike type guys. And they both came over to Wink. Like Wink. Reeves. Like, kind of a Reeves thing, yeah. Um, and Proby, uh, Proby did very well in Britain. But Vince Taylor also bombed in Britain, so he ended up going to France. Uh, quite mad, mad as a hatter, Vince. And uh, he formed a band over there. One night, he walked out on stage dressed as Jesus and said, I won't be needing this band anymore. In fact, I won't be needing any of you because I have places to go and, and uh, a father to uh, return to. And he became Christ. And uh, <laughs> uh, the, the I, I met him once in London and uh, he took me down Oxford Street in London and opened up maps and put them on the pavement and showed me where all the UFOs were going to be landing <laughs> shortly. <laughs> And, and Vince kind of became a, a role model for, for the Ziggy type character. But Vin, the, the unsettling, Vince unfortunately is no longer with us. He died about seven or eight years ago. He ended up, this is very unsettling, as a maintenance man at Geneva Airport for Swiss Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people know that, Bradley. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm thinking this may be the best band David's ever had. You got Reeves here. I'm going to just ask you the basic, how'd you hook up with them? And I'd like to add this to the question. How has their function evolved during the time they've spent? Like Reeves, we know, we know he no longer plays as much and is more of a sex symbol. But how about Gail and Zach and those people? Where'd you find them? In? That was a question, Reeves. Uh, oh, directed at me? I should hope. It's yours, I guess, Reeves. Um, I don't know. How'd you find them? Um, I, he was recommended to me. <laughs> I was thinking it wasn't a terribly exciting story. You no. know, it's, uh, I was looking around for somebody. <laughs> there was nobody else around except Reeves, and, and so uh, uh, I see no reason to go. I mean, it doesn't cost much to feed him or anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was the clothing just... is starting to take over, though. I mean, the, the wardrobe expenses are becoming prohibitive. <laughs> As you can see. <laughs> yeah. Especially right, folks we have someone else, I believe. <laughs> and who might you be, sir? Uh, Paul Parcheski. Paul, what's your question for David Bowie? Uh, if you could go backward in time, what moment in history would you visit? Uh, I think probably around 90, uh, between 1907 and uh, uh, 19... I want to miss the First World War. So let's... let's about 1913, 1914, just around there. For, for the, uh, probably that was the most exciting period, I think, in, uh, in music and in art and everything. Where would you be during that time? Between Paris and London, mainly Paris, I think. That's just as the uh, Russian Revolution's starting to get ready to happen? That's right. Well, right. that was 1917, but you're not far out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> uh, David, if you had to leave this planet for another planet, uh, what would, three things would you want to bring with you? <laughs> Boom! 
Can, can we come back to that? Yeah, let him think. <laughs> Why don't you do a song and mull that one over and we'll get back to it. <laughs> That's a really tough question. What? what? Let's, let's do another song. <laughs> Okay, this is, this is, uh, I, I should give this up. Filthy habit. Guitar is a filthy habit. If you do it right. Are you okay? <laughs> Learn how to do it, it's not so bad, right, Reed? Oh, okay.